everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Today I'm going to take you through how to play Ricciacara alla Nuova. This is the second piece on my album Constellations. As you may have known, I've released the sheet music to a couple of the pieces on my album in my web shop. You can download it for soprano or alto recorder or tenor. Um, and today I'm going to take you through how to play it. This is actually a piece I wrote myself along historical lines. Originally it was a four-part canzona by the Renaissance composer Giuseppe Guami. I took that four-part piece and converted it into a solo piece. I actually made a video on how I did that a while back. Then I took this solo skeleton and made two pieces out of it. One is a more simple version and one is a very highly ornamented competition version, as I like to call it. And that is the version that's the second track on my album. Oh yeah, when you download the music, you actually get all three versions. The quartet version, the simple version, and the ornamented version. Why not combine them all in a concert? Uh, Ricciacara is a very broad term, but it basically means an early piece of music, an elaborate instrumental piece where a theme is explored in lots of different ways. The word comes from to search or to seek out, and I really feel like in this piece of music you're seeking out your own story. So I'm just going to play the opening to give you a bit of an idea of how the theme sounds. So this is a piece that tells a story. I don't have a story to give you, it's one that you can make up on your own, but I have written it in a way that it sounds like there are different voices talking to each other. I have put breath marks into the music, so that can be a handy way of identifying the phrases. Then it's up to you to fill in who is speaking each phrase? What are they talking about? What is the story that you are going to give this piece? With this comes changes of atmosphere and, if you like, tempo within the piece. I really like to play this music as if I'm improvising it, so sometimes I push it a bit faster, pull it back a bit slower, and that is absolutely fine. Let's give you an example. This is a section from the more ornamented version. I'm going to play it pushing the tempo on the metronome, I'm pulling it back. See which one you like. The nice thing is, you can like one version one day and a different one the next day, but it's important to try these things out. Now, because I've said you can be flexible with the tempo, that doesn't mean we should forget the pulse. I've written it with two beats in a bar. Because that gives it a nice feeling of movement. In the simpler version, I've left some parts quite bare, so rather than thinking about the notes themselves, I also want you to think about the connections between the notes, the relationships. To practice this, I like to try and sing the next note in my head while I'm playing the first one. And another nice exercise can be taking a phrase and playing it in two different moods. You can do this with the tempo, with the dynamics, with the articulation. I haven't put any of those in because they can be up to you. And eventually with this simple version, hopefully you'll have your own story. You can enjoy what I think is a really nice melody, but tell a story with it as well. Ooh, let's move on to the ornamented version because there are a lot of notes. 
I made this very virtuosic because it's a competition piece. If you are an advanced player who would like a challenge, get this under your fingers. So I'm going to demonstrate a couple of phrases in this simple version and ornamented version so you can hear a little bit what I did. cheesiest cadences ever but I like it. It's very important when you're playing the ornamented version to be able to hear the original simple version in your head as you play. That gives it structure and makes sure it's not just a string of notes. So how did I make these ornaments? I've actually bundled a whole load of different influences. Mainly I've used Ganassi. He basically wrote this whole book, La Fontagada, of examples of how to ornament phrases that you can be inspired by, and that's what I was. I even took one example off the page, and that is the That's such a cool way to end a phrase. So most of the ornaments were from Ganassi, but I used some stylistic things from other composers. From Van Eyck, I tried to use octave and other kinds of jumps. For example, becomes From Bassano, I use one of his ideas for structure, Often in a Bassano Ricciacada, somewhere around two thirds of the way through, there's a very calm moment. And for me, that was. From Ortiz, I use the idea of a one note trill in a very specific piece. I don't know if I've notated this. I do. A lot of Renaissance pieces have what's called a tripler, which is one short section in three time instead of two. So that's why I wrote near the end. Back into two, to the drama of the finale. And the finale, I also borrowed from Van Eyck, where he goes into crazy hemi demi swemi quavers. I can't always play it in one go. So as you can hear, it's a whole mixture of Renaissance styles and influences, and it's so much fun to play. The big jumps. Of course, I'm hearing it now, they have to be in tune. Do them slowly. It helps me to think of blowing warm air for the low notes and cold air for the high notes. If you practice this, it will help the notes speak better and it will smooth out the differences in dynamics, which will help you get it more in tune. Sounds like a win-win situation. <laughs> Okay, later on in the piece, I write these crazy fast parts. I perform it slurred because it's just meant to be like a But of course, make sure to play it slowly first. That sounds really obvious, but it's true. Often we start with and don't notice that we're missing half the notes. I find it's really helpful to have anchor points. If I stop on these anchor points, I can kind of recollect and continue to the next one. That helps my fingers to go in the correct speed, but without running away with themselves. 
And to close all of this, I will just say, make this music your own. I can't believe that people have already downloaded this music. So if you do play it, please send me a recording. I'd love to hear it. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here. Down here is the link to the Team Recorder web shop where you can download the music. And up here is an old video on Renaissance diminutions where I show you how in detail I made that solo version. Big thanks to Carol von Steinhoven for his video that taught me how to do it. Check that out too. Thanks for watching and have a great day.